Well, howdy there, Internet students. Mr. Hermanson again. Uh, today we're going to be doing Lesson 6.2D. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of an investigation and discovery. This will help you a lot to understand um, the objective of this lesson, which is to be able to identify parallel and perpendicular lines by their uh, graphs, their equations, and their um, tables, whatever, using slopes. Um, so, you guys, uh, I just wanted to find one thing before you get started here. Um, on the second worksheet here, page 23, I believe it is, perpendicular lines investigation, I just want to quickly define perpendicular. Perpendicular are two lines that form a right angle. Now, um, it's really it would be really easy to tell if they're perpendicular if one is vertical. So I'll just make that. So here's a, this line, and then uh, this line. These are perpendicular lines, and we know that because where they meet, they form a right angle. All right, and that's the little uh, notation for right angle, a little square in the corner there. All right, now they can actually be, you know, right angles at slants too. But what you're going to discover from this investigation is that um, when they're perpendicular, something happens with their slope, and when they're parallel, something happens with their slope. So go ahead and um, Draw these according to the directions and then answer the questions on the next page. I'll show you the answers just in case you might have done something wrong. All right, here's what I got. And so in this one, we're looking for parallel lines. And you should have noticed that. Now, I'm sorry about I'm a little colorblind. I'm not sure that I drew a brown line. Um, but anyway, um, we should have gotten that parallel to A is the brown line. And here's what you need to notice about that. Right there. Parallel to line B is the red line. Notice this about the slopes. And parallel to C is the green line. And notice this about the slopes. So we can generalize that and say that the slopes of parallel lines are equal. All right, now when you were doing this one, this is a perpendicular line investigation. Here's what your line should look like. Again, sorry if my colors are off. Um, you should have noticed that um, perpendicular to line A, remember perpendicular makes right angles, is the orange line. And what you need to notice about those lines that were perpendicular, is there something going on there with the slopes? I'll describe it in a second here. Um, the blue line is perpendicular to line B. Take a look at the slopes of those two equations. And then um, the purple line was perpendicular to line C. Again, look at the slopes. Um, it's a little harder to tell, but these numbers are opposite reciprocals. So slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. Now, what most students remember from what you just heard is that um, you might either remember their opposites or you might re remember their reciprocals, but you actually need both. So let's say one line, let's say line A has a slope of, say, 3 over 2. If line B is perpendicular to line A, the reciprocal of that would be 2 thirds, but you need that to be a negative. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. So 
And here's the symbol for perpendicular, just so you guys should know it. So A is perpendicular to B if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. I'll do one more, a whole number. Um, a would be perpendicular to B, line A would be perpendicular to line B if the slope of line A was 4. Now remember there, you could write that as 4 over 1. So we're going to flip it. That's the reciprocal 1 over 4 and then put a negative in front of it. So um, if this was negative 4, then the slope of B, if it was perpendicular, would be positive 1 4. All right, so we're going to use that information to help us on today's lesson, okay? So first of all, you need to understand reciprocals. Reciprocals are two numbers with a product of one. Like, um, I'll give you a decimal example, 0.25 and 4. If you multiply 0.25 times 4, um, you get 1. So they have a product of 1. Um, Remember that 0.25 is actually the fraction 1 fourth. And if we multiply that by 4 over 1, we get 1. So any two numbers that have a product of 1 are opposite reciprocals. Um, any two numbers that have a product of negative 1 are, I said that, that I should have just said reciprocals, not opposite reciprocals. Um, any two numbers that have a product of negative 1 would be opposite reciprocal. Go ahead and do number 1 and 2. Okay, um, if you multiply these two, you get negative one, so they're not reciprocals. They're actually opposite reciprocals. Zero doesn't have a reciprocal, because when you multiply zero times anything, you get zero. You couldn't get one, right? All right, uh, I'm going to skip this one since we already did that investigation. Uh, all right, so the slopes of parallel lines um, we have saw in the investigation that they will be parallel um, if they have the same slopes. And the slope is a coefficient. So match them up. Um, remember that, uh, that an equation like this represents a vertical line. Okay? All right, so you should have matched them up with equations that have the same coefficient. Um, for the x equals 3 and x equals 2, we know they're parallel because all vertical lines would be parallel. All right, so um, here's how we're going to use this idea. Um, we want the equation of a line and slope intercept form that passes through the point 2, 15, and is parallel to the graph of this. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. You decide how you want it. But because we know it's parallel, we know we want the slope to be the same. Same slope. So I want the slope to be 4. So I know this equation will be 4x and then plus whatever works to make this a solution. Now, um, I'm going to suggest, so one, one way you could do that is, uh, remember I taught you how to do this, substitute the 2 in for x, substitute the 15 for y, and then figure out what you need to add. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. So the y-intercept is 7. The answer is y equals 4x plus 7. Okay. The other way you could do it is, since you have a point, point-slope form is really easy. It would just be y minus 15 equals... 4, we want 4 for the slope because we want it to be parallel, x minus 2, and then just simplify this to slope-intercept form. You do that by getting rid of the parentheses, and then get rid of this minus 15 over by the y. So add 15 to both sides. Negative 8 plus 15 is 7. So either way, you get y equals 4x plus 7. Go ahead, you try the next one. Here's my work on that one. All right. The other thing we learned is that perpendicular lines have opposite, remember there's two parts to this, opposite reciprocal slopes. So um, if the slope of a line is 2, like this one right here, then a line that's perpendicular, like that blue line, needs to have the opposite reciprocal slope. 
So I just put a one under there so I can flip it. So now it's the reciprocal. Now it's the opposite reciprocal. The answer is D. All right. Um, so look at these two. Um, and just by looking at these two things, decide whether the graphs will be parallel, perpendicular, or either. Make your choice. My choice is neither. Um, because they're not exactly the same coefficient, one is a negative and one is a positive, they're not parallel. And they're not opposite reciprocals. They're just opposites. So, so the answer is neither. All right. Um, so I'll let you try this. What you're going to have to do is solve this for y first. Okay. Um, remember how you do that? Isolate the y on this side and then look at the slopes. All right, I am choosing perpendicular because my slope here is positive 4 thirds. My slope here, oh, nope, I'm changing my mind. Um, I'm going to say neither because we would have to have one be positive and one be negative. They are reciprocals, but they're not opposite reciprocals. All right, and remember that um, right here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, to graph this, um, it says uh, the graph of which equa equation passes through the point 10, 15 and is perpendicular to this graph. Well, right away, to be perpendicular, you need the opposite reciprocal. So we're going to flip that 5, 6 and make it 6 fifths. So I'm going to narrow this down to those two choices. And we want the equation that goes through the point 10, 15. So um, one way you could do that is just substitute in 10 for x on both of these equations and see which of those ends up giving you 15. Um, the other way is just to make the equation. I'll do that right here. Um, I'm going to use point slope since I have the point and the slope. I know um, I wanted to go through the point 10, 15, so the equation would look like this. I distribute this 6 fifths, I get 6 fifths x. And 6 fifths times negative 10 is actually negative 12. Then I'm going to just add 15 to both sides. And I see that uh, negative 12 plus 15 would be 3. So y equals 6x, 6 fifths x plus 3. So the answer is C. All right. Uh, why don't you try that? All right. Here's my work on that one. I got negative 1 half x plus 8 and a half. All right. So um, let's uh, do one more problem here. Uh, Carla is using the coordinate grid to make a map of her hometown, which that's true. You make maps on grids. Uh, GPSs are like that too. Um, if 3rd Street is perpendicular to Main Street at the point 5, 7, let's go ahead and put that point on there. 5, 7, that's right there. Now, underline the word perpendicular because that tells you what you need to know about your slope. What is the equation for 3rd Street? Well, um, first let's get the slope for Main Street using those dots. And that looks like we're going down 1 for every 5, so negative 1 fifth is that slope. And so let's go ahead and use point slope form here. So we want it to go through the point 5, 7, so I'm going to do y minus 7 equals the opposite reciprocal of negative 1 fifth, which is positive 5 over 1. And then I need x minus 5 to make sure I go through the point 5, 7. And um, that, that is an equation. So actually, we're done. Um, we could say, all right, here's my equation. It's just in point slope form. If you want it to be simplified, which sometimes you do, you would just go through this process of getting rid of the parentheses, add 7 to both sides, and 
and uh, you get y equals 5x minus 18. All right, I think I got one more for you to try. See if you can do that. Oh, no, that's it. All right, I think you're ready to go ahead and try some homework problems. Go ahead and message me if you're having issues. Other than that, we'll talk to you soon.